Okay, I'm going to begin with scan one, and we're going to do some corrections to the photo. You can see there is some damage. Let me change my zoom tool. We can see up here above my brother's head, there's some damage to the photo near the lamp. And we can also see over on my dad's face on his right cheek, there's some damage to the photo. And I'm in at 100% right now. We see damage on his arm and his t-shirt. So scanning my image in actually made it quite larger. But if we click on print size, you'll see that it's still a small picture, but it gives us a better resolution and a better print quality. So if I click on fill screen, I can actually zoom in quite a bit here and the image still isn't that bad and it will allow me to do these corrections. Okay, first thing I wanna do is I wanna duplicate my image so that I can work on a copy of it and know that I still have my original to go back to if I need to do any comparisons to my original or bring back anything that I may have made mistakes on. So let's go ahead and duplicate this. Again, we can right click on the layer and choose duplicate layer or we can click on the panel menu and we can choose duplicate layer or we can also click on the layer and drag it down to the new layer icon and when we let go it gives us a copy of our picture now the only difference here is it does give us a copy but it doesn't give us the opportunity to rename our new layer like it does when we choose the duplicate layer command so I'm going to double click on background copy and we'll rename it scan one and I'm going to go ahead and hide my background layer so that when I'm making changes to this one, the other layer doesn't bleed through or make me believe that I haven't made any changes. Okay, so let's go ahead and start here near the lamp. We'll start with something easy and something that we're not too concerned about how well we fix it. We're probably going to be more concerned about the repairs that we make to like my dad's face up on his eyebrow or on his cheek and maybe his shirt rather than the background images. And this will give us an opportunity to become familiar with working with the software. So I'm going to press my letter H, get my hand tool, and I'm going to bring down my image so I can see the top part here in the wall next to the lamp. Now one of the first tools we can use is called the Spot Healing Brush, and it looks like a Band-Aid. If I click and hold on the Spot Healing Brush tool, you'll see we have several tools that are available that are used for retouching images and to remove flaws such as scratches and blemishes, and if this were a color picture, perhaps even red eye, because you can see here we have a red eye tool just for that. So let's start with the Spot Healing Brush tool. It's the first one. Let's see what it does. This is the default tool in that tool group, and it's going to remove any flaws in an image based on the surrounding pixels. So when I bring my brush over, when I click, and remember we can always change the size of our brush by clicking on the left square bracket or the right square bracket. I'm going to click on that little spot there to the left of the lampshade and what happened was it did a proximity match based on the area around it and you can barely see any edge that had been changed to show that there's actually been a patch there. Let me make it a little smaller and try again in some different areas. Now that one we see it kind of smudged and it doesn't look right. Let me undo that, Command Z or Control Z. Now let's try up here on the options panel that was doing with content aware so that's the same concept as using the content aware when we did our removal of an object when we made a selection we went to edit fill and removed our selection using content aware so it looked around our area and we wanted our selection to be a little larger than what we were removing so that it knew what was good and what was bad essentially and what to compare to now let's try proximity match so let's select proximity match and let's try another one. I'm going to go down below the lampshade and I'm going to click my mouse and we can see there that the cursor is a little too small. It wasn't giving us enough information for a proximity match. So let me do a command Z or control Z to undo that. I'm going to make a larger brush. I'm pressing my right square bracket and I want to make this a little bit bigger than the area that I'm correcting. So with proximity match selected, I'm going to click that with my brush and now you'll see that took information from around the area and it actually brought a little bit of this dark part into this section here but if I click it again with the correction you can see it gets a little bit better so I can use proximity match and it's going to take the area around where I'm clicking and place that inside my cursor and again I can resize my brush and click that one doesn't look that good. Let's try again. 
and we can make corrections. So as you can see with the proximity match, we want our brush a little larger than the area that we're correcting, but we don't want it too large where it's going to show damage. So here, that one's not working very well with proximity match. So let's undo that. Again, Command Z or Control Z. I'm going to try Content Aware on this one. And I'm going to click again. Now Content Aware did a much better job in that area than proximity match. So as you're working, you may find that proximity match may work better than Content Aware in certain cases, and depending on the large area that you're working with. Okay, let me try this spot here. And we can see this is actually working very well. Again, that's the Spot Healing Brush tool, and that's our default tool in our Retouching Tools section. A couple more things to point out on the Options panel is that you can choose to sample all layers by clicking the box in front of Sample All Layers, and what that would allow you to do is actually do non-destructive editing. We could create a new layer, a new blank layer, and using Sample All Layers, we could actually make our corrections on a layer above our image. But since I duplicated my image and I'm working off a duplicate, I'm not going to worry about that, but you could choose that option instead. And just to the right of Sample All Layers, you do have this option here. So if you were using a Wacom tablet or any other input device that allows you to use a pen or a stylus, then you could use that and it would work with your stylus in allowing it to affect the pressure that you apply to your tablet and how that would react with Photoshop.